Free BSD reviews, tutorials and gaming. Well, this is a quick look at uh, Dragonfly BSD 5.4. I was prompted to do this because there was a review recently um, of Dragonfly BSD by someone on YouTube who frankly made a pig's ear of it and practically stated that Dragonfly BSD was unusable uh, and hard to install. And This is the first time I've used Dragonfly. Now I'm used to using FreeBSD and uh, other BSD derivatives but Dragonfly is one I've never touched and I installed this on VirtualBox it was very easy. If you could install the more advanced Linux distributions and, uh, of course, install FreeBSD, then this should be of no difficulty whatsoever for you. Um, it's easy, it's fast, and I found it to be a very viable alternative for a desktop. In this particular case, I wasn't using Hammer or Hammer 2, I was using the UFS, um, simply because I think that Hammer would uh, prove to be too resource hungry for uh, the virtual box that I was using. But as you can see, I'm using Dragonfly BSD. Here's my NeoFetch screen, and there's the details of the host, etc. And yeah, I managed to install XFCE. Uh, it runs very, very quickly, and I highly recommend it. Dragonfly is a base operating system. It comes with no real installed third-party uh, applications, and so everything that I'll be showing you is really being installed after the fact by, by myself. Once installed, XFC on Dragonfly BSD is as usable as XFCE on any other Linux distribution or FreeBSD based distribution. It's uh, practically a standard XFCE desktop. Um, with the addition of a few uh, programs which I've installed after, uh, for instance Octor PKG, uh, which I've installed on Dragonfly. But you know, you usually get the usual terminal, file manager, mail reader, web browser, uh, settings, accessories, um, the usual. I've added LibreOffice, and CMonkey and Silfeed and Abbey Word. Uh, I think that's all I've added so far. Um, but adding new programs to Dragonfly BSD is as easy uh, as any Linux distribution and as easy as FreeBSD. So if I want to um, use a graphical package manager, which by the way works way better than it did on GhostBSD, Ghost PSD um, gave me a lot of hassle when it came to using Octo PKG. I don't get that same level of difficulty or trouble on uh, this version. Um, I find it to be fast and pretty comprehensive. There are some programs which are not available on Dragonfly BSD uh, that are available elsewhere. There's no simple screen recorder and there's no OBS. Um, so if you wanted to use Dragonfly perhaps as a multimedia desktop then you may come into difficulties regarding that. But we'll have a look. We'll try OBS. Um, you see that was fairly quick. That was really fast. Um, I must admit that Dragonfly BSD is really really quick. Uh, in VirtualBox. Now it'll be even faster on real hardware of course but in VirtualBox it's uh, it's pretty fast. But we'll go down, we'll have a look. Um, OBS. There is no... Yeah, there's no OBS there. And just to check on Simple Screen Recorder. Da da dee. Right. Screen Recorder. No, there's no simple screen recorder. But of course, I mean, you know, you can use FFmpeg to um, to do your screen grab if you wish, and OBS is not not strictly needed. But yeah, if you want to install something, it's as easy as any of Octopi or any of Octo PKG um, implementations you might find elsewhere. Say, for instance, uh, I've not installed GIMP. I'll make sure that I haven't. 
No. If you want to type, if you want to install GIMP, I would prefer the command line way, but if you want to use the graphical package, package manager way, then uh, if you want to use the graphical package manager way, then uh, this is the best way to do it. So if you go down to GIMP, uh, just right click, install, and just the arrow to commit it, and it'll start to install. Um, confirm, yes. There you go. Doing it business. Not the fastest reaper. One thing you do find about uh, Dragonfly BSD, which is it's not got the fastest um, servers to which download from it. Um, they are relatively slow. I don't know whether that's a bandwidth issue or um, uh, a resource issue, because I should imagine they're a very uh, they're a smallish outfit. But it's not so bad. You're not going to get super fast speeds. My internet speed is uh, relatively beefy, uh, but even then it still goes slow on here. Almost. The GIMP help file is a, is a huge file anyway. So yeah. It's not too bad. My overall impression of Ghost... Uh, Ghost? My overall impression of uh, Dragonfly is it has a server leaning. It's it using Hammer and Hammer Two. It's perhaps more inclined to be a more server-based um, OS, but it can also be used. This is, I mean, this is almost like FreeBSD in a way. It can be used as a desktop with a little bit of extra work. But once you do that, the desktop is a robust and sound um, way to have a desktop, as all BSDs are really. Yep, it's just installing it. There we go. So once that's done, we go down to applications and see if it's installed. Yeah, there it is, let's see. So it's relatively easy. Um, I, I find, ooh, nice version. I find it relatively easy to inst install and deinstall programs on Dragonfly. Um, well, that's unusual. Hmm. So yeah, I'm, I'm quite impressed. Uh, they have got a fairly good selection. Like I said, not every program that you ever want is going to be on there because um, it's just I don't think they've got the resources to do it. But it's fairly straightforward. So, um, for those who like XFCE, um, and there's quite a few of you out there, it's easy to um, tweak this to your own heart's desire. I'm really not into um, the aesthetics of it too much. If it works, it works, then uh, that's brilliant. Let's have a look. Applications. Let's go down to we'll have a look at the settings manager, see what's available. Uh, that one is pretty standard. So it's fairly straightforward. Um, I may do a video on installing Dragonfly, it's not difficult to do. So yeah, even uh, is it at the present time installing it's 146 megabytes of uh, active memory. Of course you've got 345 which is reserved for um, other things. But yeah, that's not so bad. That's fairly lightweight. Not bad at all. Now that you've installed um, something fairly uh, simple, like GIMP. We'll check out some. We'll check out some of the. I earlier installed uh, LibreOffice, so we'll check that out. We'll actually, see how that works. LibreOffice Writer. Hopefully, it works. Yeah, that's quite quick, quite speedy. Of course, it works nicely. There you go. That's LibreOffice Writer. Um, of course, you're familiar with that. I don't need to tell you the ins and outs of that. So yeah, it's um, it's a capable desktop. It's not perfect by any means, and like I say, I think it's more oriented towards server. But as a desktop, it will function nicely. It's an alternative, and so it perhaps to look at and poke around with. But it's um, this is just a quick look at Dragonfly.
I've not delved into it. Um, that could be for a later video. Let's have a look at the file structure while we're talking. You know, it could be for a later video, maybe. But I just wanted to show that it's easy to install and easy to get them going. You know, once you've installed and you get onto the command line like uh, you do with FreeBSD, then it's just package install uh, xorg, then package install uh, your desktop of choice, uh, XFCE. The instructions are basically the same as what I, I've described in uh, how to install XFCE in five easy steps on FreeBSD, uh, which will be coming out on um, just after midnight on Saturday, GMT. Uh, the set steps are the same, you know, package install Xorg, package install uh, the desktop, uh, edit a couple of uh, config files and there you go. It's really easy. So I don't know why this particular YouTuber had uh, great difficulties. I think um, the person in question really should perhaps expand his or her horizons a little. But you know, that's just it's, it's something that prompted me to make this video. Um, it's not difficult. Anyway, thanks for watching. I know it's not into much detail and it's only very quick. I just I decided to uh, make this during a, a small break that I had. Anyway, thanks for watching.